Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Uh, as Tracy just mentioned, my name is Forrest Evans. I'm the Director of Product Management uh, here at Rundeck. And Megan, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, folks. I'm Megan from Datadog. I'm happy to be partnering with Forrest and the Rundeck team on our integration together and excited to be talking about using both for incident management. Yeah, so uh, since this is uh, kind of a joint webinar, we like to, to usually start off a little bit about what, uh, what each of our products do, just to, to set the stage. Uh, so I'll go first with what is Rundeck. And uh, Rundeck is a, is a runbook automation tool that can be used to do self-service you know, operations tasks, uh, provides a console to create workflows and, and automate some of those long, complicated technical tasks that you might have. And then you have the ability to share those operations out uh, in a self-service fashion to others at a pretty granular level. Uh, Rundex part of the, you know, the PagerDuty family of products, um, you know, that brings automation to, to those workflows and, you know, really helps automate that across an entire incident lifecycle. Megan, talk a little bit about Datadog. Cool. Um, so for anyone who isn't familiar with Datadog, we're an observability monitoring and analytics platform. Um, a little bit about our company. We're currently working fully remote, but we do have three major offices that we're very much looking forward to getting back to once we can do so safely. Um, our company is made up of over 2,000 employees. We support over 12,000 customers. We're multi-cloud and run on millions of hosts and collect tens of trillions of data points per day. Uh, we enable everyone ops, devs, security, and even business to have a complete understanding of system and application performance by monitoring end to end, from infra and network to apps and services, all the way to end users. So Datadog seamlessly connects your metrics, traces, and logs so you can see what's happening and know why. By bringing all this data together, you can correlate traces that follow the code path from your user's browser all the way to the backend systems and data stores and then view it all together with the logs generated from your systems. We provide all this information in one tool so you can quickly pinpoint problems and resolve them. And Datadog also recently introduced incident management. Incident management allows users to declare incidents from anywhere in Datadog. Triggered alerts, dashboards, application metrics, logs, user metrics, everything that I just mentioned using a variety of different entry points including using the Datadog clipboard, which can be used to collect all of these different data points. And altogether, these can be used as signals and context for incident investigations. You can also declare and manage incidents from chat. We currently support Slack and incident response channels will be created and associated with the incidents timeline. All this means is that you can investigate without losing any context and it's a unified approach to incident response. So when I say unified approach, I'm referring to staying close to the source, your monitoring data and where you work by integrating with best of breed products. So of course, chat, ticketing, but PagerDuty and Rundeck for escalation and remediation. Datadog's incident management is alert and data-driven with an emphasis on collaboration to mobilize the right response team and seamlessly connect with the rest of what you have in your stack. Datadog's incidents allow you to quickly build a timeline of your investigation, analyze the impact and the root cause, and using this data, once the incident is resolved, will automatically generate a detailed postmortem to allow you to focus on learning from the incident. So at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, so we're here to talk about Datadog and Rundeck. So how do these products work together? And I'm glad you asked, and we're going to take a look at that right now. So I think it's also important to look at the role that PagerDuty plays in these workflows. So I'll cover using Datadog, PagerDuty, and Rundeck. There are several different ways these products can interact. First, Datadog detects an issue in your infrastructure and applications and sends a notification through PagerDuty to escalate to additional folks on call. From there, you can declare an incident in Datadog, which will start building your timeline. Think of all of those different steps that I just mentioned in the slide prior and you can simultaneously trigger a mediation response in Rundeck. You can also trigger a mediation response directly from a triggered Datadog alert while the on-call folks are being notified. Ultimately, no matter how you use these together, you spend less time managing those products and instead focus on the incident. You reduce toil, eliminating any manual or menial tasks that Rundeck can manage for you, and service is restored, and mean time to resolution is also reduced. So basically what this means is your end users and your engineers are having a good day. Now I'm going to pass it over to Forrest, who will walk us through a demo going into more depth about how Rundeck and Datadog can be used together. 
Now, before we, we get to the demo, we are, you know, we are going to show a demo of, of Datadog running some triggers through Rundeck to, to manage incidents and talk about some of the integration points that, that we made there. But the, that automation tends to uh, make customers that we've seen a little nervous, right? It can make technical people nervous that, um, you know, you're going to do something with, with, without hands-on keyboard. This is sort of a view in, in how we look at automation evolution. And really the automation doesn't have to start with something incredibly risky, you know, restarting services or removing or adding stuff. Uh, it, it can start at a point of just gathering logs and gathering troubleshooting information that might be your normal step one if a service goes down. That can be operator initiated. And you can continue to kind of climb this mountain of once you're comfortable with the operator initiation, maybe you automate those, that collection of KPIs, health metrics, et cetera, into the incident, and then continuing up the chain into riskier, maybe more complex automation. Uh, these are some of the automation ideas that we have when we look at reducing incident time through, uh, through automation actions with Rundeck. Uh, right, pooling diagnostics, when we look at specifically some of the integrations we've done with Datadog, you can mute and unmute hosts for maybe planned outages. Uh, you can restart services and servers, of course, clearing database unlocks. Uh, there, there's lots of things, including opening, updating, and closing tickets. So from a demo perspective, we have an environment that I've uh, set up here. And I'll preface this, that we, uh, we did kind of build this, maybe not in the most ideal and most streamlined fashion, but, but it's with the intention of showing you steps along the way and highlighting some of the integration points. So I have two hosts that are running Nginx in my environment. And when one of those hosts, if one of those services were to go down, we've configured uh, using the webhook integration with Datadog to call some jobs in Rundeck and perform some actions. So I'll just go ahead and uh, stop the Nginx service on one of my servers. And while Datadog is doing some polling for that, I think Tracy has another couple of poll questions that you can fill out in the meantime while we're waiting for this to come back with some failures. So we can see now that one of our hosts is providing us an alert. And if we refresh this page, I believe one more time, we'll see that a webhook has been triggered out to Rundeck. We can see that in the activity tab here. Find log in. And that uh, there is an error in, in this, and it's going to declare an incident. The error was actually the expected outcome. If this, um, if this workflow errors at all, it opens for us a new incident in Datadog. So we now have a service outage of Nginx. We can see that it's severity three. I was assigned as a commander. And on a remediation tab, we've also added a task that we need to check Nginx on node one. That would be the, the node that we stopped over here. So in addition to that, uh, this is where some of the steps come up that, that maybe could have been further automated, but we chose to do this uh, sort of on demand. Uh, there's a few other webhooks that we can run directly from this incident that Rundeck will automate for us. So if we come in and do another webhook that just says Nginx restart, this is gonna fire a job in Rundeck that will restart all of our Nginx instances uh, to bring them back to a healthy state. So we'll send this as a webhook. Come back to our, uh, our activity tab. And we already see that this job is, is firing a bulk service action for the service Nginx and it's performing the action to restart all of those services. Once this, uh, this job is done here, we can come back and check our status and see the Nginx is, is running again. So now, again, another, another step that probably could have been rolled into a longer bit of workflow 
we still have our active incident here. But if we run this uh, Nginx confirm, this will trigger a final job that will confirm that all the services are running. It's gonna, gonna reach out to all of the Nginx services. And if it gets a status clear, it's gonna resolve this incident for us. And then uh, you know, we can, can mark it as completed once we validate and, and maybe add a, a post-mortem, et cetera. So if we refresh this page, we can see that Rundeck has automatically resolved this, uh, this ticket here. We can see there's incident 96, it went out and confirmed the service Nginx. And once that came back successful, it resolved our incident for us. Yeah. And then Megan, I don't know if you wanna take over control and talk a little bit more about the incidents here. Um, so I think that this is really interesting because you can see that from all of the actions that Forrest ran, the timeline is capturing them. Um, and then from here, there's a generate postmortem button at the top. Um, and Forrest mentioned you can generate a postmortem. And I also mentioned that earlier. So from this, all of the information that was captured as part of this incident, and even if we go back to that overview page, there's an opportunity to describe the impact. There's an opportunity to describe the root cause and fill out some of those assessment fields. Um, and once everything is complete um, from this, when you click generate postmortem, it'll take all this information and it'll populate a data dog notebook. Um, so before when I mentioned uh, spend time on learning and less time on products, like this is exactly what we mean. These tools work really well together and then you're capturing everything without having to manually re not only run these tasks, but then also recreate the postmortem because all this information is already captured here. Yeah, a little bit more about the, the Rundex side. This is run through our webhooks infrastructure. Uh, we can see um, these are the various webhooks that it's run and, and then uh, through the debug window, we can see the, the different um, calls that were made here. And we can, if we scrub back maybe one more, we can see that this was the service status rule. It sent this payload uh, when we did the notifies, uh, matched up with this rule and, uh, and ran a particular job. Uh, when we look at the jobs within this project, these are the three jobs that we, we ran through the demo. And there's quite a few other example jobs. These are all uh, built-in workflow tasks that are Datadog specific. And there are a couple questions coming into the Q&A. To answer Michael's question, quick answer, webhooks are available in our open source version of Rundeck. Uh, the webhooks in enterprise are what allow for the debugger window, as well as you'll notice in this one, I have two different rules. So this, the enterprise version has our advanced rule processor that allow for conditions. So we only run this if the alert transition field in the payload that comes from Datadog has the word triggered. And then we can, you know, extract the service name from that, as well as you know, the ability to have multiple rules. So we have the declare service incident and the confirm service status all within the same webhook. So for all of these, we're using the same endpoint here and just reacting to, you could react to different payloads. Another example, incident specific, when these are triggered uh, on this timeline, when the uh, Sorry, when the, when the monitor, there's a monitor status of triggered and then there's a monitor status of resolved, you could, you know, use the same webhook endpoint to address, address and run different jobs uh, based on the same, same payload, same endpoint coming in. An anonymous attendee asked a question, how does this help in cloud world like immutable infrastructure, application, and, and container world? So Rundeck has the ability to generically or broadly speaking, you can do anything with Rundeck that you can script. Uh, so if it's you know spinning up additional containers, as we saw here, restarting an application, restarting more extensive infrastructure, uh, you can, can script all of that. So when we look at our, our nodes list, part of our integration with Datadog, this is all of my infrastructure showing up from my list of Datadog infrastructure. So if I look at my infrastructure list here, right? This list, same list here. We're also importing, make the screen a little bit bigger. We're also pulling in the tags, et cetera. So 
part of the demo is using the Nginx tag that's coming in from Datadog to identify the various hosts that I should be running information on. My demo environment that you see running here is all a, a self-contained Docker demo. If you can script it, we can do it. If there's a if there are follow-up questions, uh, feel free to, to continue to post them in there. How compatible is, is Rundeck in the Azure world? We do have plugins. So uh, when I say we have uh, plugins across Rundeck, there are various ways and in, in, in different plugin points, right? We have the item where I just showed all the nodes. We have node sources, a variety of node sources here. Uh, there is there is an Azure one to so specifically answer the question there. There's also job steps. So think of these job steps. As I said, you, you can do anything you can script, but the enterprise version brings is a significant number of extra steps that do the coding for you, if you will. You don't have to write the script to create an incident. You can add this step and we'll figure out the API command for you. You just need to provide the authentication information and the details. So from an Azure standpoint, uh, we, we can schedule a, an additional follow-up to dig into some, some more of those details. There's a, there's a link at the end of the presentation. We, we can follow up some more on the details for Azure. Is there an integration to monitor the health of Rundeck itself in Datadog? Not yet. There are obviously um, a, you know, a ton of metrics and information, but uh, that's probably something I can, I can take as a follow-up with, with Megan and some of the other uh, product managers that we work with over there and work on uh, you know, better health of that. Rundeck is flexible on the database backend. Now, I'm, I'm sure that there are already plugins or integrations for things like MySQL and Postgres, et cetera. But yeah, that's a good follow-up for us that we should, uh, we should be able to monitor the service itself um, and watch. There, there are some metrics you can get in, the, um, in our system report. So you can see some of this uh, performance information here. There is a JSON endpoint. Shouldn't be hard to, to start to, to get that going. Does the webhook from Datadog allow the passing of dynamic data in the form of Rundeck options and a Rundeck job? Yes, it does. Get back to my webhooks listing here. As I showed in this declare service incident, we are passing the service name as part of the webhook. I think I have it hard coded it from a demo standpoint, but uh, we are able to do that on the webhook side. I think I'm going to the right place. If I get off path here, Megan, you can correct me. But if we look at our webhook, how these webhooks were configured on the Datadog side, we can see that I, I added a field here, service engine act, and then associated this. Now, this could maybe this could be more dynamic and use some of the variables. We are also um, using the, I am using the alert tran transition. Uh, this is a dynamic field from the, the data dog sign and that alert transition if it this rule will only fire when it's triggered when it recovers it won't fire this webhook the run deck data dog examples i i can make the um I, i'm not sure what part of the examples you're you're looking for this is for for terrence but i can make these job examples available and possibly even the the docker environment as a whole the one challenge is if you're going to run it kind of locally on your machine, how to get Datadog to talk to the Rundeck. Rundeck is does run as on-prem software. I personally use a, a tool called Ngrok so that uh, the web hooks from the Datadog SaaS service can talk to my local laptop. Like this is running on my laptop right now. So there, there are some challenges, but happy to share the um, job definitions that we have in here, the web hook uh setup instructions etc uh this, this video will be available afterwards but yes to answer your question can rundeck be set up to be highly available can play nice with multiple instances running yes it can be set up to be highly available uh, our enterprise products one of the cornerstone features of that is uh the ability to cluster it so you can point it at the same you know what, whatever database backend uh, you're you're running 
run multiple clusters. The job executions can be shared. One goes down, other ones can take over, you know, either executions that were uh, ready or getting ready to run, whether they were scheduled or queued up. And then you would need to put like a load balancer in front if you want to kind of also share the front end. So yes, it can be set up to be highly available. Uh, more information about that on our documentation site, and we can uh, we can talk through more of that another time. Is there a Teams incident response integration on the roadmap? This sounds like a question from Megan. I, assuming that you mean Microsoft Teams, that is on our roadmap. We're working on it. A couple of questions in here about Kubernetes. We do have people using Rundeck with Kubernetes. I would encourage you to reach out through either our communities or the call to action on the slide at the end here. And we'll be able to dive into all of those details with, uh, with one of our sales engineers or field engineers. How do you differentiate Rundeck from Jenkins Pipeline or, or Spinnaker or Argo? Uh, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with Spinnaker or Argo. Uh, we have a Jenkins plugin, right? So Jenkins Pipelines are so widely and, and ubiquitously used. The big difference in, in the thing that, that people tend to lean towards Rundeck for is the ability to share these workflows with other operators. So I'm logged in uh, as an admin here, and I'm, I'm probably getting off my demo script, but we're going to give it a try. I can also log in as other users and just give them access to the projects and the jobs that they need. So I've logged in as Alice now, and if I come into this welcome to Rundeck project, we can see that I don't have all of the same uh, list of, of icons here. Even if I come into this jobs listing, I can't run all of these jobs. I can't run this install job because I'm not entitled to that. So there's a full ACL um, you know, system in here that you can provide the self-service that those particular end users need. If you want to give your level one technicians the ability to run diagnostics information only and help identify the problem, and then your level two technicians maybe are allowed to restart services and you know further on up the chain all the way to your SMEs can just organize their own special, you know, they could have their own project that is their uh, things they run all the time and, and separate that out. You know, Alice that I logged in as here, is able to see the Datadog project, uh, but not allowed to see any of the jobs in it. Uh, you can even hide the fact that the Datadog examples project exists, but that wasn't that wasn't set up quite yet for this. Does Rundeck integrate with ExtraHop? Um, again, if you can script it, we can do it. Uh, we don't have any specific integrations or, or what I would call sometimes refer to as branded integrations uh, with ExtraHop. I, now that I've heard that term, I'll definitely take a look at it and see what ExtraHop uh, does. But if they have an API, if you're able to write a script today, we can take as a job step uh, so going back to these jobs, adding a new job, you know, workflow step right here, you can run a script. And this particular script would be run per node as a, as a node step, um, as a node, uh, we have two different classification steps. All of these node steps that are listed here would be run per node in the environment. Uh, these workflow steps would just be run once. So I should actually switch back to the data dog because there's more nodes there. If I had a node step that ran a script, I could run that against a all of or a subset of these nodes, depending on, on what filter I'm interested in. If I come in and say, maybe I just want to run it against everything that is AMD 64, well, there's the host that that, that would apply to. Christopher Tina has a question. Does high availability mode, I'm assuming the high availability mode for Rundeck, add extra challenges to integrating with data dog metrics as multiple clusters of Rundeck nodes need to be monitored? So I'm not sure if I'm fully clear on the question, but I, I think there's one clarifying point is that Datadog is still doing the monitoring. Rundeck is just responding to webhooks coming from Datadog. So uh, the high availability mode of 
run deck would still be sending the web hooks to a particular endpoint, integrating with Datadog metrics. The, uh, I think, as we mentioned before, we don't have a specific integration that Datadog would monitor run deck today, but my assumption would be that would just be, and Megan, correct me if wrong, we, it would just be through the Datadog agent. So you would add the Datadog agent to your Rundeck server. It would then subsequently monitor that instance uh, of Rundeck for uh, issues, performance, et cetera. That sounds right. And I think that we posted docs into the chat as well. Yeah, because there, there's a if there's another follow-up or um, something more um, we can clarify on that, feel free to, to repost again. Next question, Rundeck is executing the job with remote SSH. Yes, uh, Rundeck does not use agents. Um, it is remote, remoting in through SSH. You can provide we use a variety of different pieces. And then uh, many are, they, they don't allow the SSH port. So Rundeck is running on-prem, essentially behind the firewall. If you're if you're saying many organizations don't allow that port, yes, they likely don't allow that port at their edge firewall, but internally, uh, Rundeck would be running closer to those services. Uh, they, they must allow it at, at some point, or you would never be, if, if they're turning off SSH completely, then I guess we would have to see how else um, Rundeck could, could make a connection to those and, and execute commands. But Rundeck, Rundeck does not use agents to make, make connections to those servers or execute things on those servers. It is using the standards-based protocols to, to do that. When the incident was created in, in the Datadog demo, was that using escalation policies from PagerDuty or is that separately set up managed in Datadog? Uh, we did not integrate PagerDuty directly into this demo just to keep things simple. I believe you can. Uh, I would have to defer to a, a PagerDuty person or, or maybe Waldo, if you have more insight to some of that, but. Yeah, so I can speak to that. So, I, I, hi, I'm Waldo. I'm an evangelist from Datadog. Um, I used to be a productive member of society coming from the systems and ops world. So you can, so you would set up your escalation policies in PagerDuty, but in, in the monitors or in declaring the incident, when, when you're prompted who to notify, you could send out to the Datadog escalation, uh, the on-call service that you're using, and it would follow, once it hits pager duty, it then follows the escalation policy that you defined there. Yeah, in the notification, I think that I'm back on. In the notification section um, where Forrest showed the, the webhook connection for Rundeck, you can send that to Rundeck and to the pager duty escalation policy at the same time. Also at incident declaration, there's another um, place where you can send those notifications to both. 